In this episode, I'm going to speed build seven very small tabletop trinkets and terrain type items for a friend of mine. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. I'm DM Jim, and in this episode, I'm gonna be doing some speed builds. And there's a short story for this. I play a lot of different games, uh, tabletop and board games and RPGs, but one of my favorite games right now that I just cannot get enough of is a game called Frostgrave. If you've never played it, you should look it up. But in a nutshell, it is a skirmish style war game. Basically, it's you versus an opponent. Each of you has 10 miniatures. There's a wizard, an apprentice, and some fighter types. And what you're doing is you're, you're running all over this board trying to collect treasures and spell book, you know, secrets, you know, steal them and get them gone before the other person takes them. And of course, you know, there's some fighting combat and stuff like that. It's just a really fun game. You should, you should definitely check it out. I think, uh, I think it's been out now for about two years. There's an expansion, or no, I'm sorry, there's a spinoff coming later this year called Ghost Archipelago, which I cannot wait for. In the meantime, here's where the story stands. So I play Frostgrave, Frostgrave with some, some friends, and um, one of them this weekend has a skirmish, with a, a game against an opponent. I don't know who he is, but they're going to be using this new product from Frostgrave called Ul Ulterior Motives, right there. And so what Ulterior Motives is, is it's just a stack of cards. In the game, in the, in the plain, you know, plain game, you're just supposed to go out and collect treasures, and they're, they're marked by little you know, objects on the table. And if you get them off, you get to keep them. But um, what Ulterior Motives does is it gives you this deck, and each player picks a card randomly. And the cards provide sort of a subplot for the player. It, it's like a special mission that you can do, and you can get XP and, and treasures and things like that. And most of the cards are labeled secret, meaning the other player doesn't know what you're doing. But when you successfully achieve your goal, you show them the card to verify that you've, you've met your goal and you, you get some reward. Some of them are not secret. They are called reveal. And basically, uh, that's just where you put it out there for the other player to see that you're trying to do something. And sometimes it's like you're trying to kill one of their players. So, you, you know... Um, or maybe kidnap or, or steal something away from their side. The, uh, the, the, these really add a nice twist to the game. But here's the thing, uh, you know, some of them say you must go get this piece. Well, the problem is if you put that piece out there, the other player, even if you have a secret card, the other player would know, oh, what is that? That's a weird looking piece. That must be their secret goal. So what the cards do is the cards call for, those, those cards that have you going after something, they have something called a red herring right here. And there are eight different red herrings. They're described on one of the cards in the table. There's an arcane disc, a flat disc of stone about two inches in diameter. There's a gateway, which is a kind of, you know, just a door. There's a pit. It's a two inch in diameter, three inch deep pit. There's a runic stone, a sarcophagus, a statue, a trap door, and a zombie. So my friend's playing this weekend and he's wanting to play this a lot. And he needs... He doesn't have time, and he asked me, he's like, hey, could you make some of these for me? And I'm like, sure, I could do that, but um, I'm not making the zombie. He can buy a figure. But, you know, most of these are pretty straightforward, and they're small. So I told him, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll make these for you, and, and um, you just have to agree to um, let me play with you sometime in the near future. So in this episode, I am going to make the arcane disc, the gateway, the pit, the runic stone, the sarcophagus, the statue, and the trap door. And most of these, none of these are actually going to be using uh, a 3D printer. I'm going to do them all in foam, uh, maybe using my Proxon for a couple things. But, you know, they're all small, so they shouldn't be too, too, too difficult. So hopefully this video is not going to be too, too lengthy, but I'm, I may skip some steps. If I say I black bombed this, I'm not going to show you me painting it black. But um, let's get to it. My friend's waiting, and I've got seven, seven of these red herrings to create for him. All right, for the statue base... I'm just going to cut roughly a 30 millimeter, let's see, three centimeter square, a piece of half, half inch here. See that? And then I'll burn a line around it for the center. There we go. One statue base. Very easy. And yes, I could have cut this with my blade. No big deal. But this is fun. 
All right, so I now have a roughly 30 centimeter square here, half inch thick. I'm going to move the fence to the 15 mark approximately, right there. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm just gonna make a line, just a quick little cut here. All right, there's the line. Now all I need to do is draw some bricks in it. I'll just do this by hand. All right, that will be my base. I'm probably gonna have to glue something on the bottom of it to make it heavier. This is too light. I'll find a washer, put glue it on there, paint the whole thing black, uh, give it a good gray coverage. Once I figure out the figure I'm gonna put on top. The pit calls for a hole in the ground about two inches in diameter and three inches deep. That's gonna be a little difficult for the depth, especially on a table. I mean, I could build it up, but I think what I'm gonna do is just cut out a two inch diameter hole. I, I traced this one. Then I'll cut around it and give it sort of a jagged edge, like it's uh, almost like a you know an ant hill kind of thing. So let's uh, let's do that. Move this I'm gonna have to cut in to do this, and then follow the line. It doesn't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, if it is perfect, that would look weird. So I'll just do a pit. there's the hole. So now what I'll do is cut around it. And I gotta give myself enough space around it so that I can do the sides and make them sort of uneven. There we go. One pit. By the way, guys, um, if you're watching this uh, and you have a Proxon, I don't know if this has happened to you, but right now I am wearing eye shields, these. And the reason being is, I always try to wear eye shields when I'm, or I'm in the workshop, but this Proxon has done some, uh, some unusual things. That When that wire breaks, um, it's not long. I don't think it's long enough for it to pop up and hit you in the face, but boy, when it pops, it really scares you. <laughs> and I just don't want to take a risk of it flinging a piece of hot foam or something up in my eye. So I'm just telling you right now, you might want to invest in a pair of eye shields if you're not doing it. It's just not worth uh, you know, the hospital visit if, if the Proxon wire snaps and takes a piece of your eye with it or flings something into your eye. I'm liking how that looks. Very uneven. So all right, one pit. I'm gonna get around the edge here. And what I'll do is I will glue this together on the cut that I made. There we go, one pit, two inches in diameter. It's not three inches deep, that would be, I don't know, that's not a pit, that's some odd looking thing. But glue that together, get it painted, and the pit is done. I think the next one I'm gonna tackle is the trap door. It says a small door that sits on the ground about one inch square. Uh, okay, sounds like just a, you know, okay. Sits on the ground, one inch square. All right, so what I'll do is I'll set my fence to, well, let's just make it a little bigger than an inch. Let's see, right about, right about there. That'll work. 
All right, and I'm gonna use quarter inch this time since it's supposed to be low to the ground. I'm not wanting it to be real high with using half inch foam. So let's, let's uh, clean this piece up a bit. All right, a one inch square foam right there for the trap door. The runic stone, any kind of standing stone from a grave marker to a monolith covered in runes. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this piece of leftover half inch. I'm gonna try to do something interesting with it. It doesn't have anything about the size, so I'm assuming it could be, it's gotta be big enough you could scrawl some runes into it. I'm just gonna do some carving, some freeform carving here. So I'll scroll some runes in there, and this will be some sort of runic marker just sitting there. All right, so I have these two wooden pieces. For the sarcophagus, it says any kind of coffin, sarcophagus, or burial container, about one inch wide, two inches long, and one inch high. I don't have foam that's one inch thick, but I do have half inch, so two of those should do it. So these are one inch by two inch wooden squares, so I could sandwich two halves between it. I'm going to use this as the to set my width. All right, now let's set the width this way. All right, so stack these like this. Where did my wood go? There it is. All right, here, one on top, one on bottom. Maybe do something on the sides, ornamental. I don't have, I'm, like I said, I don't have time to 3D print something, so I'm not gonna print him a figure to put on top, but I'll, I'll cut some cardboard and stuff and glue on here to just give it that look. The line is here. That's not a big deal. I can cover that with something or just make that part of this, part of it. But there we go, that's the beginnings of a sarcophagus. Okay, the arcane disc, a flat disc of stone about two inches in diameter, covered in runes or arcane symbols. I cut this out of the pit and it's roughly two inches in diameter, but it's pretty thick. It doesn't look like an arcane disc. I, I picture an arcane disc as maybe half of this. So I'm gonna cut this in half. There we go, and it's made of stone, so I'll go ahead and rough the edges here all the way around. All right, that's one side. I'm not gonna do the other. I'm gonna leave this flat, and it's supposed to have runes carved into it, so I will definitely carve some runes or arcane symbols into there. There is the arcane disc. The last one is the gateway. 
any kind of doorway, archway, or gateway that is large enough for a figure to pass through. It may be freestanding or part of a small terrain piece. All right, I think what I'm gonna do here is I have this magnifying glass. I'm gonna trace it onto chipboard, just this part, and use that as a template to cut out a larger piece. That's gonna be my gateway, the inner, I'll make that the inner part. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape it down. I don't have any tape handy, so I'm just gonna use this painter's tape. Okay, that'll work. All right, tape it onto here. There we go, and I'll just trace around the line here. That will be the empty part. I'm gonna cut around this and make the stone part. And then I'll do the edging again, just at an angle here, slight angle. Nice little gateway arch here made out of stone. I'll toughen up the edge, I'll roughen up the edges with some aluminum. And then I'm gonna, obviously I'll glue it to some sort of base for stability, it's just too light. All right, in less than, I don't know, 15 minutes, I've had a, let's see, arcane disc, gateway, pit, runic stone, sarcophagus, statue, trap door. Seven of the eight. Again, I'm not doing the zombie. So there they are. All I've got to do now is texture them, paint them. I've got to find a mini to glue on the base here, some runes to carve in, figure out what I'm going to do with the trap door. This is pretty cool. I'm, I'm very happy to be able to do this for my friend. You know, they're not going to be super high quality, but they'll get the job done and he'll be able to use any of these red herrings that might come up during gameplay. Okay, a couple things. Um, First, I managed to find this little guy, an archer. He was a hero clicks, I think Lord of the Rings. I cut him off his base. He's gonna be glued onto here, and I'll use some hot glue to surround him, but that's gonna be my statue right here. I glued a piece of chipboard on the bottom here that I'll paint black for the bottom of the pit. I also made a base for the gateway. The coffin sarcophagus is fully glued up. I put a washer on the bottom of the, this is the arcane disc. I also did it on the bottom of the statue and the bottom of the, the trap door. So I've gone ahead and drawn some runes on the arcane disc right here. Some of you might recognize that symbol if you play some other games. Uh, I've got to draw some runes on this one and I've got to also come up with the details for the trap door and then get them all black bombed. So that's coming up. Okay. Time to paint. Just black bomb some of this stuff. Everything is painted black except for the archer here. I'm gonna glue him on top of the base of the statue. The coffin is black bombed, gateway, pit, statue base, marker, runic, uh, runic circle, um, I'm losing the names on these things, runic stone, arcane disc, runic stone, and the trap door. I'm gonna paint the trap door brown. 
I'm going to give it uh, a wooden texture. The arc, the uh, runic uh, stone, or runic stone, and the arcane circle will get painted a stone texture gray. The the sarcophagus, I have these colored glass beads or glass squares, very small. I've got them in two different colors. I've got a dark blue and a baby blue. And I like, I like them both, but I like this dark blue. It has an added texture on it, sort of a cross with four little dots. I'm gonna use these to decorate the sides of the sarcophagus and give it color after it gets a gray coat. The pit, I'm going to, inside the pit, I'm probably gonna put some white glue and do some sand and rubble. And then I'll paint the outside uh, gray with some brown. The gateway, I'm not sure yet. The gateway is magical in nature, so I may, hmm, I'll have to think about that one. And then, of course, the statue base will get a stone texture, gray, gray stone texture. So I'm going to let these finish drying, and then I will tackle the painting. Now, I've been keeping track of my time just to cut these things out and to add the embellishments and the bases and to paint them. I have spent less than an hour and a half total on this project, uh, probably about an extra half hour for drying time. So these, are, these, are, these were made very quick. They're not anything extravagant, but... The goal was to make them quick. Uh, my friend needs them this weekend, so today is Friday. I'm gonna get these things done today and get them to him so that he'll be able to enjoy them in his game tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna do some dry brushing on the trap door, just a little bit of tan. The other thing I'm gonna do is I have these small rings that I bought from a hobby shop. I'm gonna glue one on as a handle and I'm probably gonna add some brass hinges on the back, just small little squares, so. All right, there's the handle, and I'll put some brass uh, hinges here, and this one will be called, we'll call this one done, after, and it'll get a wash. Notice, I painted the rune, uh, this one is the, I always get these names from rune. This is the runic stone. So I painted the actual emblem with this zinc, and now I'm gonna paint the rest of the stone a dark gray, and I'm gonna try not to get the emblem covered up. I want that silver to sort of stand out. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, plotting forward, I have given the arcane disc right here. I've given it a black wash. Hopefully that uh, zinc will come through, but the black will settle in the indentation of the runes, give it a nice look. Um, I also, I forgot to film this, but I gave the pit a dry brushing of lighter gray all around the edges and down the sides, and it looks really, looks nice with the, with the, uh, 
the different grays. So now what I'm gonna do is paint this inside, or not paint it, uh, put some glue along the, the bottom of the pit, put some rocks and pebbles in there, and then uh, when it dries, I'll, I'll paint it black. Maybe give it some gray, I'm not sure yet. Whatever, we'll try to figure out what looks good. But this one's just about done. The trap door is done, but I've got a couple copper pieces here that I painted. Uh, they're strips. I'm gonna glue them on the on on one on this side, one on this side, and then glue them around the to the bottom so they form hinges. And then I'll slap them with a little bit of black paint water mix here for the wash to dull them up a little bit. The gateway, I'm still not sure. I'm still pondering this. As soon as the sarcophagus dries, I'm gonna start decorating it. But I think I'm gonna give it a sponge painting of a darker color. I'm gonna try that out. And I'm still waiting on the runic stone to dry before I finish it up. Yeah. I have an update for you. So I've taken the archway or gateway and I used some glue and some sand and rocks. I'm gonna let that dry really well. But what you might notice is I did some uh, I did some dry brushing on it with some darker gray to give it this unusual pattern. The sand is still wet in here, so I'm gonna let that keep drying. I did get the archer painted and I did some uh, dry brushing on him, but I noticed there was some pink showing through the foam, so I gave this a black, some black uh, paint again and then I'll dry brush it when it gets dry. The sarcophagus is almost dry. I'm not ready to do it yet, although I did dry brush it with a darker gray. But my favorite piece so far has to be this one uh, with the runic symbol on it and the uh, zinc color. It's already had its black wash. This one's finished. I'm not gonna be messing with this anymore. I just, I love how this one turned out. The stone has got a rough look. I'm gonna weather it some more because it's supposed to look really old and weathered. So I'm gonna weather it some more. And then finally, the trap door, I glued these bands on it. I'm gonna clip them here, fold them around, glue them on the back, and then give it a black wash to dull them a little bit, and this piece will be done. And you can see the ring is, uh, the ring, the glue is dried on the ring. So there's the trap door. It is Friday afternoon, and time is getting short, but I'm getting close. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a few things done here on camera. I'm gonna clip these, clip them a little more. That'll work. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gluing these, uh, the hinges. They're supposed to be copper, and I'm gonna have to put a wash on them to dull them a little bit, but uh, I can do that later tonight. I need this glue to dry. Okay. Wrap them over and set them down so that they stay put. Okay. All right, uh, duh, duh, duh. what next? Um, this one is done. I hope you like this. This one's my favorite one. I may, <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm almost tempted to make him another one and keep this one, but no. This one's his. He, maybe I'll take a picture of it and make a duplicate, but I love the way that turned out. All right, that one's done. Statue it needs to be dry, uh, dry brushed gray on the front. I'll go ahead and do that. Try to match it a little bit. Actually, I'm trying to remember which one did I use. Yeah, I did use this one. Uh, wait a minute. I can't remember. No, it wasn't this one. It was this one. Yep. Yeah. All right, squeeze a little bit on here. All right. Do I have any brushes? Yes, I do. All right. Let me get a paper towel. I want it to match, that's pretty close. I had to paint this black again because some of the foam showed through, but there we go, it's a pretty good match. Yeah, it's nothing, um, you know, it's not a super detailed statue. I, I, I probably would have spent a little more time on it if I had another couple days, but uh, but still, pretty slick. A little figure, uh, hot glue on the, on the uh, top. The hot glue, when it cooled, it actually provided a smooth surface, which I really liked, and uh, gives it a, Gives it a nice chisel, like it, like the statue actually blends into the stone. All right, I'm happy with this one. I'll put that one over here. What else do we have? Okay, I am going to. Well, I got to get some of the rocks off of this thing. 
So I think what I'm going to do here is paint the base of this black, you know, all the rocks and stuff. And then I'll go over it with a light gray and some earthy tones to give it, uh, I don't like the, I don't like the natural sand and I think it needs something. This one turned out really nice. Um, all I've got to do here, I've got some debris left over on the sides. Uh, I've got to paint down in here black and then give it a uh, dry brush gray to pick up the, the stonework inside uh, in the sand. But I like how this one turned out, the pit. Okay, the sarcophagus. What I'm going to do on this one is, I, I mentioned earlier that I've got these, these stone, these little square glass beads. They're not stone, they're glass. And I thought it might be fun to just decorate it with colors, put them on a diamond shape like this. It'll be the only piece that really has any color. I could put a dark blue on the ends and a baby blue on the side, or I could just do blue. I'm gonna do baby blue all around. Now this is gonna go slow because I've got to I've got to let the glue dry really well before I do another one. Let's see, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna wait on that one. The the runic stone. This one is the one that's giving me trouble. I like how the silver in the rune stayed there. I'm gonna dry brush it again. See what I can do here. I, uh, yeah, that's definitely a little better. It's supposed to have a worn look to it. And I, I purposely left some areas with black. Uh, I didn't, oops, did not want the top to be that completely black, so I'll give it a little more. But the silver does, uh, again, I don't know if the camera's gonna show up, show up, but the silver tracings do still show up. They're zinc, actually. And they're still a little shiny, they're sufficient. The other thing I haven't done is I haven't weighted this down. I gotta find something heavy that will allow this to not be easily tipped over. It's just too light. All right, so all I'm waiting on right now is I've gotta paint that black, this black and wait for the glue to dry there so I can go all around. So almost done. All right, almost done. I am so close. So I've got to get the terrain painted there. Uh, terrain or sand inside the pit painted. Two more pieces put on the sarcophagus here. I'm trying to center that. That looks better. And what else? Oh, and a wash on this. I haven't decided if I'm going to put a wash on this or not because I'm worried it's going to really dull that zinc. And I like how the zinc stands out. And probably a wash on this as well. So close. Well, it's Saturday morning. Today is free RPG day. If you don't know what that is, Google it, free RPG. 
But if you have a local gaming store in your town or city, chances are they're going to be giving away a lot of free stuff today and playing a lot of free games. I'm getting ready to take these over to my friend who's going to be playing some Frostgrave today. Technically not an RPG, but that's okay. So everything is done. Here is the sarcophagus and the gateway or the archway, the pit. We've got the statue and the runic stone, the trap door right there. And then finally, my favorite piece again, the arcane disc. It just looks so cool. Seven pieces in all for the Frostgrave ulterior motives cards. And I hope my friend finds them useful. Now again, with when you pull a card that has uh, red herrings on it, usually it doesn't have all seven, it'll have two or three. But with all six or seven of these made, uh, if he has a zombie minifigure, he'll be ready for any card that he pulls. So I hope you like that. This was a quick build. I built all of these, painted them, glued them, everything. Uh, total time was less than four hours, which, you know, some of them aren't, aren't my favorite. They're, I feel like I could have done better if I'd have had more time. But given that he asked me Thursday night and I basically had Friday to do this and keeping my boys and doing real work, I work from home. So, you know, um, I feel like I, I did a pretty decent job given that I didn't have a whole lot of time and I worked up into the late hours. So I'm going to sign off and package these up and get them to my buddy. Hopefully he, uh, he likes them and uh, hope you like them. Hope you saw what can be done in a very short period of time uh, with foam. Now I did have a prox on, but a lot of this could have been done with either a handheld foam cutter or just some, some patience and a, and a blade. So thanks for paying, thanks for uh, joining me, and I will be back next week with another video. Take care.